In the previous episode, we covered redstone sensors which allow the creation of a multitude of contraptions. Today, we will try to understand how skulk sensors can be used to detect player and mob actions and transmit signals wirelessly. The process of obtaining skulk sensors was covered in our guide about the Deep Dark and the Warden. The skulk sensor detects vibrations caused by actions and events in an 8-block radius around it and emits a redstone signal. If it was triggered by a player, it activates nearby skulk shriekers. Vibrations are caused by various entity actions, such as a player or mob walking, placing or breaking blocks, gliding with an elytra, items falling on the ground, eating, or using weapons like a bow. Skulk sensors don't detect vibrations from other skulk sources or the warden. You can avoid being detected by skulk sensors by sneaking, by walking on carpet or wool, or by blocking a skulk sensor inside wool blocks. More on this later in this guide. Skulk sensors emit a redstone signal when they are activated. The strength of the redstone signal is inversely proportional to the distance the vibration signal traveled. The closer the vibration is to the skulk sensor, the stronger the output redstone signal becomes. So, it reaches the maximum redstone signal strength when the vibration or activity is directly on top of the sensor. Skulk sensors can receive vibrations from the same source, but are unable to pass detected vibrations to another skulk sensor. To pass vibrations, a block of amethyst needs to be adjacent to a skulk sensor. To understand how skulk sensors can be used to wirelessly pass vibrations, we need to first establish two mechanics of skulk sensors. First, activities detected by skulk sensors are assigned a frequency value. For example, walking is assigned frequency value of 1 which corresponds to redstone signal strength of 1. We can use a comparator facing away from a skulk sensor to read the detected vibration frequency. Jumping is assigned frequency value of 3. Eating or drinking is assigned a value of 8. Placing a block is assigned frequency value of 13, while breaking a block is assigned a value of 12. Here is a summary of assigned frequency values for different activities or actions. Second, when a skulk sensor detects a vibration, any adjacent block of amethyst will re-emit a vibration on the same frequency that the skulk sensor detected. Amethyst blocks attached or adjacent to skulk sensors work like transmission antennas for the skulk sensors. They send out vibrations with the same frequency detected by the skulk sensor. This vibration can then be detected by skulk sensors within eight blocks of the amethyst blocks. So, if we have blocks of amethyst atop skulk sensors placed less than eight blocks of each other, we can effectively pass redstone signal wirelessly. Here we have five skulk sensors in a chain. If we walk around this sensor, it detects our movement and gives this signal to the amethyst block, which vibrates with the same frequency. The next skulk sensor detects this amethyst block's vibration and activates the amethyst block on top of it, which is detected by the next skulk sensor. The signal frequency is passed around until the last skulk sensor. The skulk sensor's cooldown of two seconds prevents the signal from amethyst blocks from being passed backwards to our original skulk sensor. The signal frequency is preserved when passed around as long as we have amethyst blocks adjacent to all skulk sensors involved. The transmission is quite slow, so don't use this wireless setup for contraptions which need near instantaneous action. A specialized type of skulk sensor is the calibrated skulk sensor. It behaves mostly like the regular skulk sensors, with four exceptions. First, it detects vibrations or activities with a wider range, up to 16 blocks away, instead of 8. Second, it has a cooldown of only 1 second instead of 2, meaning it can receive another signal sooner and can make transmissions more frequent. Those first two key differences allow calibrated sensors to be more suited for use in long-distance wireless redstone contraptions. Third, the sensor can be locked to only one frequency to listen to. This is done by powering the crystallized side of the calibrated sensor with the equivalent redstone signal strength. If walking is assigned vibration frequency of one, we can power it with a redstone signal of one to lock it to that frequency. So now, if I break or place blocks, no vibration is being detected. Lastly, calibrated sensors can be waterlogged to keep them silent but still function as is. That is very tricky though, because redstone components like redstone dust and comparators are washed away by water. 
Woolen carpets have a special interaction with skulk sensors. If a wool block is placed between a sensor and a vibration source, the sensor is not able to detect the placed wool nor vibrations behind it. Skulk sensors are not able to detect footsteps or dropped items on wool blocks or carpet, and they are also unable to detect dropped items of wool and carpets. Skulk sensors pass on the vibrations made by players to skulk shriekers within eight blocks of the sensor. Alarms can be blocked by wool placed in between the sensor and shrieker, similar to how wool can block vibrations from reaching the sensor itself. Please note that player-placed shriekers cannot summon the warden, but still emits those scary shrieking sounds. Learn more about the deep dark in our dedicated guide. Skulk sensors offer a unique and innovative way to detect and transmit signals wirelessly in Minecraft. By understanding the mechanics of vibration detection and frequency assignment, players can create intricate contraptions and systems. Experiment with skulk sensors and amethyst blocks and see what unique contraptions you can create. Share your creations and let's push the boundaries of what's possible in Minecraft together. This is Expensage. See you again next time. Thank you.